So we are going to talk about the shifted inverse power method. Now in the last video, we talked about the power method and how you can use that to find the eigenvalue with the biggest magnitude. But sometimes we want to find a particular eigenvalue or something that's not the biggest one. And in that case, the shifted inverse power method is going to help us out a lot. So let's start out by using the definition of an eigenvector. We know that AV equals lambda V. And we're going to start out, again, this will look a little confusing at the beginning, but we'll see why we're doing all this in a second. I'm going to subtract alpha I V on both sides, minus alpha I V, where alpha is just some number I made up, and I is the identity matrix. So A V minus alpha I V equals lambda V minus alpha I V. Now, on the left side, we have two matrices that are both multiplied by the vector v. So we can factor that out. We get a minus alpha i times v. On the right side, remember that the identity doesn't do anything. So we can ignore that. And notice we have two different constants that are both multiplied by v. So again, we can factor that out to get lambda minus alpha times v. And now what we're going to do is take the inverse of a minus alpha i and multiply it on both sides. So if we do that on both sides, the inverse times the original matrix will give us nothing, so we just have the vector v. Then on the right side, we'll have a minus alpha i inverse lambda minus alpha v. And remember that lambda minus alpha is again a constant, so we're able to factor that out to the outside of the equation. And in fact, what we're going to do is divide both sides of the equation by the constant value lambda minus alpha. So these two will cancel here, again, because they're just numbers. And we're going to get that a minus alpha i inverse v, this right side here, is equal to 1 over lambda minus alpha times v. So what is this equation telling us? Well, this equation is actually one form of the definition of an eigenvector and an eigenvalue because this matrix A minus alpha I inverse, when we multiply by V, has the same effect as scaling V by 1 over lambda minus alpha, meaning that V is an eigenvector of this matrix here with eigenvalue 1 over lambda minus alpha. So the reason this is important is because V is an eigenvector of this matrix, and it's also an eigenvector of the original matrix A. So anything that's an eigenvector of our result down here is also an eigenvector of our original matrix. We can use this expression here, 1 over lambda minus alpha, to solve back for the eigenvalue of the original matrix as well. Now, why would we want to do this, you might be asking? Because couldn't we just use the power method on the original matrix? Well, let's say that this matrix has two eigenvalues, lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 1. We could use the power method to find the eigenvalue and eigenvector for lambda equals 2. But we could never figure out lambda equals 1 with the original power method because it's not the dominant eigenvalue. But now let's go back to this equation here. What happens if we let alpha equal 0 0.9? Well, the question is, what is the new eigenvalue that went with the original eigenvalue of 1? Well, for our new matrix A minus 0.9i inverse, the eigenvalue, we'll call it omega, is equal to 1 over Lambda minus alpha is 1 minus 0.9, which is suddenly 10. That's the eigenvalue that goes with our original value of 1. And if we look at the other eigenvalue, the other omega is going to be 1 over 2 minus 0.9, which is actually going to be something that's less than 1. So in fact, our original eigenvalue lambda equals 1, which wasn't originally the dominant eigenvalue, now is the dominant eigenvalue because of this shifted inverse changing the eigenvalue that goes with the eigenvector. And we can think about this in terms of graphs as well. If we try to graph on the x-axis lambda and on the y-axis the magnitude of 1 over lambda minus alpha, for some value alpha, as we get lambda values closer and closer to alpha, the value of our function is going to increase up towards infinity. And in fact, whichever eigenvalue, whichever lambda is closest to alpha, that will now be the new dominant eigenvalue, which means we can take any number we want and find the eigenvalue that's closest 
just by using this shifted inverse method with the number alpha. So let's go through an example of how this would be applied. Say we have some matrix A, and we want to find the eigenvalue that's closest to one. We would let alpha equal one in our matrix and figure out A minus alpha I inverse. Then we would use this matrix right here and apply the power method until we get some eigenvalue and eigenvector. We know that eigenvector is an eigenvector of our original matrix, and then we can use this equation here, omega equals one over lambda minus alpha, since we know alpha is one, and we know the eigenvalue omega of this matrix, we can easily solve for the value of lambda and get our eigenvalue back. So that is the shifted inverse power method. You want to find the eigenvalues closest to some number alpha, you apply the power method to A minus alpha I inverse. The eigenvectors are the same as the eigenvectors for the original matrix, and then you can use the equation omega equals one over lambda minus alpha to easily solve back for your original eigenvalues. Now in practice, you normally wouldn't compute A minus alpha I inverse because computing matrix inverses is also fairly computation intensive for larger sizes. So what you would do instead to iterate is to solve the equation A minus alpha I X sub N plus one equals X sub N because solving this equation for X sub N plus one has the same effect as doing A minus alpha I inverse times X sub N. Then you can use something like LU decomposition to solve this matrix, which is a little less computation heavy. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about what can you do to choose good alpha values without knowing anything about the eigenvectors to begin with. So be on the lookout for that.